Hi everybody, my name is Richard McMahon from the numerical reasoning testing website howtobecome.com. That's me there on the bottom right hand corner with no hair. And in this video, I'm going to give you some brilliant numerical reasoning test tips, tricks and sample questions for you to try. Now, I would very much like you to take notes or at the very least pay attention. Watch the video from beginning to end as I promise you. All of the following tips are going to be of a massive help to you. If you're required to undertake any kind of numerical reasoning test, this video is going to help you. So to start off with, I'm going to give you seven fantastic numerical reasoning test tips. Now we're going to move on to some questions. Each and every one of them is of same importance. Okay, question, sorry, tip number one. Before you go to the test, try and find out how many questions you're required to undertake under under what time. So for example, let's say you're given 20 minutes during your numerical reasoning test to tackle 30 questions. Do a very quick calculation to work out on average how long you have per question. Now what happens is these numerical reasoning tests are required to be performed under time conditions and the timing is relatively tight. So let's say you work out that you've got 20 or 30 seconds to answer each question. You're taking a minute or two on each one, then you're going to quickly run out of time. But if you have um, a general idea of how long on average you can take per question, this will give you some confidence in passing the test. So if you're given 20 minutes to tackle 30 questions, as an example, there are 60 seconds in every minute. So do 60 multiplied by 20, which will give you 1200 divided by 30 as 30 questions. And that will give you 40 seconds on average per question. So that, that means you've got 40 seconds per question to work it out. If you feel that you're going over time, move on to the next one, but make sure you leave a gap on the answer sheet. Okay, so that's tip number one. Make sure you do a quick calculation to work out how long you have per question. And this is important also in the build up to your numerical reasoning test, because when you're practicing for the particular test, then you can spend no longer than 40 seconds per question. Okay, so give yourself 40 seconds per question in the build up so you know how long the time is. And have your timer next to you when you're practicing to work out and feel how long 40 seconds is. Tip number two, follow this format. This is really important. Follow this format when answering numerical reasoning test questions that are based on information provided. And what I mean by that is when you have numerical tests with graphs or charts. Okay, follow this format. These three important steps. Number one, read the title of the information presented. OK, don't look and absorb the information presented. But let's say, for example, you get a question like this and you have a chart there. It's got marks out of 40, subject um, 30 and above. Don't read that information because it's confusing. And this is where most people go wrong. So the first part is to read the title of the information presented. And the title there is based on 100 students, marks in English, maths and science examinations. So I automatically straight away have a basic idea of the kind of questions I'm going to get asked. I'm not looking at that chart at all because it will confuse me. I don't need to know it at this stage. So that's the first part. The second part, number two, now read the question. Again, you're not looking at the chart. You've only read the title of the um, information presented. And the next bit is to read the question. So the question here is question one. What is the percentage of students who achieved marks of 20 or above in their English exam? Now, that question tells us that we only need to extract or dissect two parts of that chart. We don't need to worry about the rest of it at this particular point. So the final bit, number three, is dissect the, inf the only the information needed to find the answer. So what is the percentage of students who achieved marks in 20 or above in their English exam? So I'm just going to look at English and then I'm going to look at in marks of 20 or above. And the correct answer is 52 percent. OK, now a lot of people when tackling numerical reasoning tests will spend time looking at the chart, looking at the graph. You don't need to. OK, so just to recap, the first part is to read the title of the information presented. The second part is to read the question and the third part is to dissect the information needed only to reach your answer. Follow that and you will save bags of time during your numerical reasoning test. OK, number three, a quick one here. If you're running out of time during the test, do not guess. 
Now, lots and lots of different types of um, not just numerical reasoning tests, but psychometric tests, mechanical comprehension, abstract reasoning, etc., are designed to make it really, really difficult for you to finish. A lot of assessors will mark you not just on your speed, but also your accuracy. Okay, so, and a lot of them as well, this is really important. Believe it or not, some employers will deduct marks for incorrect answers. So if you're struggling to, to finish the test, and let's say you've got a minute left, and you've still got, um, say, six questions to answer, don't wild guess, because you can lose marks. It's better to get the ones that you have done correct than to just ruin it in the last few questions because you're guessing. Because a lot of these kind of numerical reasoning tests will be um, obviously under time conditions, but they'll give you multiple choice options in the answers. And you might think to yourself, well, I've got a one in five chance of getting it right. Don't go down that route. Okay, unless you know for sure you're not going to lose marks for for um, incorrect answers. Number four, this is a great tip. You're going to really like this one. Okay, learn this percentage cal calculation trick. It will save you, again, loads of time. Now, when you're undergoing numerical reasoning tests, there is a big chance that you will have to carry out some form of percentage calculations. Now, let's have a look at a way to calculate percentages really fast. Let's say you're required to calculate 30% of 400. Now, most people will go through 30 divided by 100, multiplied by 400, but there's a really quick way to do it, even without a calculator. So what you do is you cancel out the zeros. So there's one zero on the 30%, so you cancel out one more on the right-hand side. And then all you do is do three multiplied by 40, which if you know your times table, then you can do it really quick. 3 multiplied by 4 is 12, add the 0 on the end, it's 120. If we do another one quickly, 70% of 600, all I do is, ca is cancel out the two zeros. I know 7 times 6 is 42, because I know my times table, therefore the answer is 420. Now, of course, you're going to say to me, yeah, but Richard, what about percentage calculations that are not multiples of 10? Well, it is just as simple, okay, and learn this one as well. Let's say we have a question or we have to work out 30% of 81. So what you would do, therefore, is cancel out the zero, but you would then move the decimal place one point to the left. So even though it doesn't show it, we know that the decimal place would be 81.0. So we move the decimal place from there to one point left. So it is then three multiplied by 8.1. And you can do that in your head. It's 24.3. So if I look at 30% of 8.1, I do that in my head, cancel out the zero, move the decimal place one point to the left, and I know the answer is 24.3. Let's do another one, 90% of 97. So we cancel out the zero. We then move the decimal place one point to the left. So it goes there, and the calculation is just 9 multiplied by 9.7, and the answer is 87.3. And that is a great way to practice these, okay? Just calculate, um, write out a few calculation uh, percentage questions yourself and then work them out using this process. And if you need to watch this video again, please feel free to do so. By the way, um, at some point during this video, I'm going to give you some free percentage calculations and other numerical calculations that you can go on, access on my website and try them out for free under timed conditions. Okay, tip number five, because I've been talking about using the times table, please make sure you know it. Many of you will do but you should be able to calculate. If I say to you, what's eight times nine? You should quickly be able to go 72. What's three multiplied by nine? Th um, 27, you should know these off by heart really quickly. And the way to do it, if you're not too sure about your entire times table, then use a blank sheet like this. And again, I'll give you a copy of this um, in my website area very shortly. So you can just print this off and you can start practicing your times table. If you're going to pass your numerical reasoning test Knowing your times table in your head off by heart is really important. So that's tip number five. Tip number six, let's say you skip a question. Leave a space on the marking sheet. Okay, really important. Um, the majority of um, psychometric test questions and numerical test questions will require you to do them online. But again, if you skip a question, make sure you leave a space on the marking sheet. Because if you've got time later on, you can come back. But if you don't leave a space, then all of the preceding questions or answers are going to be wrong. Number seven, calculators. Now, if you are required to use a calculator, make sure you know how to use one. Most people think they know how to use one,
but they don't. But make sure you know how to use a calculator. And these are the things that you're going to look out for on the basic calculator functions. Because if you look at a calculator, the majority have all of this MC, M plus, M minus, MR, AC. And if you're honest with yourself, do you know what these mean? These are the basic functions that you should learn. Very, very simple, but confusing to a lot of people. For example, AC is all clear. So you clear absolutely everything on it. Um, for example, CE is clear entry, so you clear the previous entry, but the rest of them prior to that will still be live. X2, which is squared. And also, don't forget the percentage button. If you're required to do percentages and you have the option to use a calculator, make sure you know how to use it. Really, really important. And practice. Practice using a calculator before you go to the numerical reasoning test. Now, if you contact the test center or the employer, ask the question, are we going to be allowed to use calculators, yes or no? And if they say yes, what kind of calculator are you required to use so you can practice with one? So practice, practice, practice is really important for you getting the highest scores possible in your numerical reasoning test. And what I want to do is I'm going to give you seven sample questions. I want you to work through these now without the use of a calculator, please. OK, so do them. And I want you, please, to put your answers to each question in the comment section below. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put them on the screen. I'm going to give you seven numerical reasoning test questions. You've got 12 seconds to answer each one that follows. So like I say, don't use a calculator, you've got 12 seconds. I'll put a timer on each page to show you how long you've got left. So work quickly, treat it as a proper test, and then I'm going to give you some more sample numerical reasoning test questions for you to try in your own time. Question number one. What is 9 elevenths of 88? And there's a timer going down on the left. 9 elevenths of 88. You've got A, B, C, D, or E as your options. OK, don't forget to put your answer in the comments section below. Question number two. Calculate 4.99 plus 19.09. Choose from A, B, C, D or E. There's a timer going down. Moving on to numerical reasoning test number three. Calculate 6.47 minus 3.29. A, B, C, D or E. Moving on to question number four. If you count from one to 100, how many, number, how many numbers containing the number four will you pass on the way? A, B, C, D, or E. So how many number fours will you pass along the way? Question number five. What is 48% of 900? A, B, C, D, or E. Question number six. What is 1,888 divided by four, A, B, C, D, or E? Question number seven. On a school trip, at least one teacher is needed for every eight students. Work out the minimum number of teachers needed for 138 students, A, B, C or D. OK, well done, well done, guys. Don't forget to put your answer to each question in the comments section below and I'll mark them for you. Now, to get more numerical reasoning test questions, simply click the link below this video to get more free practice tests. You can go through to my website, get loads of free practice test questions on numerical reasoning and assessment to help you prepare. Um, I, I love creating these videos for you, everybody. I would very much appreciate, appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up. Um, say hi in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm making these kind of videos every week, so you'll get an email notifying you as soon as I make one. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And I wish you all the very best in your pursuit for passing your numerical reasoning test.